Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. And this is the five year test for Cobra drivers. My good friends at Golf Bidder have sent me all of the Cobra drivers of the last five years. And I've handpicked one from each year and I'm gonna test it using Pro V1s and GC Quad. So far I've done the Callaway, the TaylorMade, the Ping and the Titleist drivers from the last five years. And for popular demand, the Cobra was the next one on the checklist people were asking for. Um, this is really interesting because if someone had asked me how many golf clubs the Cobra bring out, drivers, I'd have kind of went, I'm not that many. I think I might have been slightly uh, blinded to the fact, I think they've almost brought in out in excess of 20 drivers. It's actually really hard to put a number on it because... They've changed the name a lot from Amp Cell to Bio Cell to F6 to F7 to F6 Plus to Bio Cell HL. You know, they've, they've then brought out the King Limited Edition and a black version of it. I'm not counting all the colours that they brought out because obviously Cobra bring out a lot of different colours. From the grip normally tells you how many colours they brought out in this range, or even this one. This is the Bio Cell going back all the way to 2013. And this came out in orange, blue, and red. Well, you've got some other ones that have come out in way more colours. I'm not really counting the colours so much, more the actual product lines. They've been quite sneaky. 20 plus, honestly, crazy. You wouldn't have thought it. I think that's kind of quite good in a way because you don't feel like they brought out that much stuff. But also, uh, probably don't get as much stick as they should do for bringing out so much product. I'm going to test it. I've handpicked one from each year that are all as similar as possible. Now, the only thing that's different with this 2013 model, which is the amp cell, is the neck adjustment has changed. So I've got to use a slightly different shaft. This is a Fujikura fuel, but in every other of the drivers, so the next one being 2014, I'm using the bio cell, then the Fly Z from 2015, the F6 from 2016, and then the F7 from 2017. I'm going to be using this Project X shaft, which I think, again, is another Cobra a limited edition shaft they've only made it for those guys so that's the shaft i'll use for the other drivers if you've not seen this test before i'm going to hit 10 drives with each driver i'm hitting a first round of five shots each and then a secondary round of five shots each again so we've got 10 shots the shots that count are the shots that hit the fairway the fairway that we've put out here is 20 yards either side of the center line so you've got to hit the in that window for the shot to count I'm then going to take the best five averages of all of the drivers, the five years that I've tested, the ones that I'm actually going to be testing, and then we'll have a look at the end to see how much, if anything, of these drivers changed in that time frame. Let's get hitting. So this is Amp Cell, 2013 model. Obviously came out in loads of different colours. I've got this in the orange one. I've got all of the lofts on these drivers at nine and a half, but this is just the only one where I've had to actually change the shaft but I don't think it'll make a huge difference. Let's give this a hit, enjoy, and we'll see what the results look like. That is all the first five done from the Cobra from Ampcell 2013. Just nothing, in, like no distance at all. Literally nothing. I'm going to move over to the uh, next version. See, it seemed to be just going up and spinning too high. Let's move over to 2014 to the bio cell. See if there's actually much of a difference. Okay, so moving now to 2014, and this is the bio cell. This is where the actual wrench changed because it went to a slightly more, no, it's not still the old one. The small wrench, which was very annoying at the time because all wrenches are pretty much universal now. Where the old ones, they were much smaller. They've changed since. So this is where I can put this new shaft in it. Uh, this is the, the Project X, the one that I'm going to be testing the rest of the drivers in. The blue shiny head of the bio cell. And I think this is where it started to come out in a few more different colours. I think green, orange, red. Might have even been a grey one as well. Let's give this one a hit. 2014 bio cell driver.
Okay, so that is all five done with the BioCell. Um, a ridiculous improvement compared to 2013, just from the off. Let's move back now to 2015, where we go Fly Z Driver. Okay, so Cobra Fly Z Driver now, 2015. This came in a plus version as well. The weight is all the way back on this, and I've kind of kept that thing with all of the drivers. I wanted to test one from each year that was as compatible as possible. So I've not gone for the super low spin one, I've gone for the run of the mill standard one. And this is the same. We've got a little bit more technology in here. We started to mess around with uh, affecting the face and you know putting smart pads in and things like that with Cobra. That's actually a speed channel around the head as well. This kind of got introduced now. Fly Z, nine and a half, same shaft as the uh, BioCell. Let's give this a hit. I've only got this in the black head, but it did come out in different colors as well. Okay, so that is all five done with the Fly Z. Um, not convinced by that one at all. Let's move on to 2016 F6 driver coming next. Okay, so F6 driver, this is now 2016 model. This is where we had movable weights front and back, so you could go penetrating or towering. And this also came out in a plus version, which had more of a bigger channel where you could actually slide the weight forward and back. Again, I've just gone for the standard one. I've not gone for the all singing or dancing one. And we've put the weight back like all the other drivers are pretty much weight back as well. Nine and a half, same shaft as the last two. Black head, let's give this a whirl, F6 driver. All five with the F6. All right for distance, just found it a little bit less controllable, but actually probably felt and sounded the best. Next one, F7, the latest one, 2017 model. I've got it in the gray finish. And again, the weights at the back. I'm gonna swap the shafts. Okay, so F7 introduced a weight in the heel as well. So you've got forward and weight movements. And I've got the weight at the back again. You could move it more forward. They lost the penetrating and towering. I think that was a good idea. They've gone for low and high, and they've put one in here for draw as well. In the plus setting, that wasn't an option. I think they even had one even closer, slightly to heel. So this is neutral weight back F7, gray head. Looks very smart. Still came in different colors. And same shaft as the last three. That's four drivers, actually. Last three drivers. Let's give the F7 a hit. Okay, so that is all five done with F7. I'm gonna loop back around, do all of the drivers again for another five shots, and join me, we'll have a look at what the numbers look like. Right guys, so the results are in, and just a reminder, it was 10 shots with each driver, I've picked the best five from each of the drivers, and then we've done an average, so we can see from 2013 all the way to 2017, how much difference has been. Now this has made for very interesting reading. Incredibly interesting. Let's start off with club data first. So this is what I feel like I can control going into these tests. And we see up on screen there at the moment, there are all the five drivers that I hit, the club head speeds were all pretty much the same, anywhere ranging from kind of 112 miles per hour on average, one popped down to 111, one popped up to 113 miles per hour. So pretty consistent and relatively fast, um, where I'm normally about 110, just in my normal driver swing. So I'm, I'm pleased with those club head speeds. You can see all the other data there. The top right is where I want to draw your attention to as well, that strike location for the five drivers that I chose for the averages and all pretty centered strikes. So again, it's just showing that the test is 
as, as consistent and as data-driven as physically possible. <coughs> Let's have a look at the numbers, because this, uh, this makes, honestly, for very, very interesting reading. So, just to remind, it had to be on that 20-yard line, so inside that 20 yards away from the centre line, to count. I feel like the Cobra drivers, out of all the tests I've done so far, have given the most inconsistent measurable distances. We saw some that were really good and some that were quite poor. I also want to put a disclaimer on this, that all of these drivers are what I would specify as being the more forgiving model, not massively the low spin model. And I realised some of them I could have put low spin, but I feel like just having the normal version of all of them was really important to have. So I think the spin number might just bounce around a little bit and it's kind of what we've seen. So let's start off with the amp cell. So this amp cell, the orange driver, the 2013 model, the only one that I had to use in a different shaft, but this was the Fujikora fuel shaft. Um, not great at all. Not great at all. Uh, carry distance was 256 and total distance was 268. They're the ones that hit the fairway. On a plus note, it did hit seven out of 10 fairways. So it was incredibly consistent but spin was super high for me on this driver. Ball speed wasn't particularly impressive and distance was really low. It kind of shocked me and I was warm. I wasn't going into this cold. And bear in mind, I did five shots, swapped around in another five shots to keep that kind of consistency up as well. So bio self from 2013 for me wasn't particularly great. We then moved to 2014. Sorry, that was the amp cell. We then moved to 2014, which was the bio cell. And we, see to, we seem to see a ridiculous improvement. This was carrying at 281. The spin rate was under 2,500 spin, so 2,437. The ball speed was up at 161. Ridiculously better. It hit six out of 10 fairways, so I've counted the five that hit as an average, like way better. And this isn't a low spin version, this is still the standard run of the mill version. So between the two years, it's like 20 odd yards difference, 25 yards difference, crazy differences on carry. Then we move to fly Z, or fly Z wherever you live. And again, we see a huge drop off in performance. Now this is a high spin model, the weight being at the back, and it isn't for low spin models, but none of the other ones are either. We see a carry distance of 253 and a spin rate at 3,800. I just couldn't get that flying distance at all. And this was played in the same shaft as the bio cell. So it's not as even if the shaft had an effect from the bio cell to the fly Z, it just did not seem to produce the numbers at all. Ball speed again was lower than 160, just didn't, didn't do it for me, it just wasn't there. And we saw before that all of the clubs were hit at the same speed, all in the same strike location. The spin rate for me on that was super, super high and performance just dipped enormously. We then move to the new two, the two newer models. We've got the F6. The F6 is um, the version where I can move the weight front and back. I had the weight in the back, so in the towering setting, again, not the super low set, spin, spin setting, but we see, again, a huge jump in performance compared to the previous year. We've seen 278 carry for just under 300 yards total distance, 2,600 spin, 162 ball speed and six out of ten shots in the fairway so like way better than the previous model but not really any better than the 2014 model we're seeing very like the figures are very jumpy it doesn't seem very like we don't see any consistent gains and the, the figures seem to be bouncing here there and everywhere we then move on to the new model this is the F7 driver, again the standard version, not the plus, had the weight of the back in standard. This hit the most fairways, of, or, uh, I think it matched with the amp uh, cell. It's hit eight out of 10 fairways, so very, very straight driver. As almost all of them were, I didn't struggle to hit them straight. That was one thing I really found that they were very accurate in direction, very forgiving, but just wasn't giving me the distances and the, and the, the flights that I kind of feel like I need. The F7 there was giving me 270 carry distance for 288, and the spin rate was nearer to 3000, but ball speed had increased, uh, certainly had increased in the five years. It, it was the most interesting 
variations of, of jumps we've seen between any of the five-year driver tests we've done so far. You look at something like tightless drivers, and they went three, three yards, three yards, three yards, three yards for the, for the two-year separation of the drivers. Here we've seen gains of 20 yards, and then drop-offs of 30, and then gains of 20, and then drop-offs of 10. Just really inconsistent numbers, and it, and it surprises me. Um, I always find that Cobra drivers spin up too much. I always find that the spin rate, certainly when you don't strike them absolutely purer than pure, they do spin up a lot. But I do find they're in unbelievably uh, straight. I find that I can hit the ball much straighter with the Cobra drivers than a lot of other ones that I test. But for me, distances just weren't there. Now, I think the distances... If I'd have tested the low spin versions of all these, yes, we might have seen more distance gain, but I still feel like this test using the drivers that are the more generic versions is a much better way of testing this because this is more suited to the mass market. Um, not sure how I feel about that. I feel a bit disappointed. I feel like the, the, the product line from Cobra was very hard to follow bit like um, the Callaway, like the product line is very hard to follow when they're bringing out different models and different brands and different names. For me, it feels like they need to stick with one model, one brand, and then continue to grow it and get a bit of stability in their products rather than going for one that's super amazing and it drops down to one that's not particularly great at all because we don't know what we're going to see next. If there is going to be an F8, what is that going to do compared to some of these? I'm looking forward to seeing if that is the case, if it, we do see an improvement. Not great. Some positives, but not loads. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to check out all the other five-year tests I've done. I've done Callaway, TaylorMade, Ping, and Titleist. And then this is the Cobra one. Comment below what else do you want to see. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Thanks to the guys at Golf Bidder again for helping me get all these golf clubs. It's, a, it's awesome working with them and they definitely uh, provide such a great service for getting these uh, second-hand golf clubs. They do a great job. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and we'll see you all soon. Sorry to any Cobra fans out there. That was pretty, pretty poor. Pretty poor performance.